We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Thank you all for listening to the Football's Family Podcast. And uh, I'm going to share with you a secret that uh, some of my friends friends know is that I enjoy movies that really don't get a lot of publicity and a lot of good uh, well, PR, I guess. They're not rated very well. Um, I enjoyed Superman, Batman. I, I enjoyed it. Now, I ended up getting the extended cut, which makes a lot more sense. I enjoyed that. I sort of enjoyed the original Justice League before they redid it. Now, I really enjoyed it recently on HBO Max. That was great. I enjoyed Godzilla, King of the Monsters, that sort of stuff. That tells you what type of guy I am. Today, we're going to talk about Draft Day, the movie that came out in 2014. We're going to talk about that movie. And and you know what? I'm going to tell you, I enjoyed it. Now, if you want to watch a football movie, watch The Replacements. Watch a movie like that. This is a drama set in a football town, you know, set in a football setting. And the thing about Draft Day is you've got to keep in mind that this is a movie that's intended to show what what could happen if if a guy, as as the actor says, goes renegade. It's not going to be Oscar worthy. It's not going to be any of those things. But it is a movie that shows the inner working of one of the most fantastic days of the year, the first round draft day of the NFL. What is it like on the inside? Because most of us will not ever get to be there and get to be on the inside. And, and you know, maybe maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's not. But you know what? We're going to talk about that today, uh, but before we do that, I want to do a couple of things. Number one, I want to recommend a book to you. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the chance to interview Gary Jajara, or Jajaro, um, and he wrote a book, Over 1,000 NFL Clichés and Hilarious Cynical Grabs. Now, I probably butchered his last name, and I apologize for that, Mr. Gary, but I've enjoyed reading this book so far. It's got one-liners in there that will get you rolling, and it, and it kind of makes you wonder where we get these words and these cliches from on the NFL. Um, it's available on nflcliches.com. Uh, if you want to go and get that, I recommend that book. It's an amazing book, uh, very funny, very uh, very good read, and you will benefit from it. And again, it'll make you laugh, make you laugh. But also, I want to, uh, again, plug – uh, one of our sponsors. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably a sports history fan. And if you are into sports history, you need to check out newspapers.com. At newspapers.com, you get access to 640 million pages worth of news from the U.S., Canada, England, Scotland, Ireland, and more dating back from 1798 to yesterday. Get a free week subscription to newspapers.com by visiting the sportshistorynetwork.com slash newspapers. That's sportshistorynetwork.com slash newspapers. And with a paid subscription, you will be helping the production of this and other Sports History Network shows. And if you have done this already, you know exactly what I'm talking about with the newspapers.com. Amazing amount of information at your fingertips. So look at that. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash newspapers. Now back to the movie. 
I want to kind of give you a little bit of background to draft day. Uh, you know, draft day is what it says. It, it starts, the, the movie starts in New York in 2000. It was based in 2014, starts in New York with Chris Berman talking about draft day and how, how uh, big a publicity stunt this really is for the NFL. I mean, we started out back in the 1930s where it was a bunch of people, basically a bunch of the owners putting in the hat, I think nine players or 10 players per owner that they have heard of. And they basically put it up on a whiteboard and each time somebody would draft a player, they would mark through the name. It wasn't a whiteboard. It was a chalkboard back then, but whatever the case is, they would put the name up on a board and they would mark through it. And you think, well, it's gone from this, from that moment. And I believe in 1938 to today where they are traveling throughout the country and it is drawing hundreds of thousands of people to see it live and it's got millions of people throughout the world watching it live nfl network espn they're they're all broadcasting because they realize just how powerful of a draw this certainly is a couple of three years ago it came to nashville and i had the chance to go up there i wasn't going to fight through the crowds uh draft day but i had the chance to look around and see how great of a of a draw this certainly is and i saw people i i saw san francisco 49ers fans uh baltimore ravens fans so i walked on the other side of the the street from them cleveland had a lot of fans there uh you know people coming from all over the country because they knew that this could be one of the most important days of their franchise's lives the existence of the franchise, and it really does depend on who they draft in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round. And sometimes you get undrafted free agents, but we're not talking about them today. Draft day is a 2000, this is according to Wikipedia, is a 2014 American sports drama film directed by Ivan Reitman and starring Kevin Costner. The premise revolves around the fictional general manager of the Cleveland Browns, Costner, deciding on what to do after his team acquired the number one draft pick in the upcoming NFL draft. Now there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of big name actors and actresses in this. I mean, we can just start with, uh, and start in with Jennifer Gardner. I mean, we just say that was it, but there's many, many more, Uh, you know, Dennis Leary, Chadwick Boseman, uh, Black Panther. He was awesome in this. He was awesome in this. Avante Mack. And, uh, you know, then they had uh, one of my favorite actors, Tom Welling. Now, what's neat about this, and I mentioned this a few weeks ago uh, on Darren Hayes' uh, show, what does Draft Day and the Superman franchise have in common? Tom Welling. And in fact, what's funny is I've gone back and started watching this. I'm on season three now. Tom Welling was Clark Kent in Smallville on the CW and the WB. Great show. The uh, you could see that the special effects are a little bit dated, but it's still a great show. Tom Welling starred as Clark Kent in Smallville. Kevin Costner starred as Jonathan Kent in in the Superman franchise, the the newest edition on uh, the Man of Steel in Superman v Batman. See, when you look at this, you think, well, that's that's neat. How how those two show they they go head in hand and they go uh, right next to each other. Kevin Costner is the GM. Tom Welling is Brian Drew, the quarterback who had undergone knee surgery and is looking like he's going to be replaced when Kevin Costner makes a ma- massive deal and trades three first round draft picks for the number one draft pick for that year to the Seattle Seahawks. Now, they're looking at the number one draft pick would be a guy named Bo Callahan. Bo Callahan is the Heisman Trophy winner. He is the – people have said he is the number one draft pick. He is the guy that you have to go to. You know, Kevin Costner wasn't sure about this. He – and I'm not going to give away too much, but uh, Kevin Costner doesn't want to draft uh, Bo Callahan. But his boss basically tells him, I want you to make a splash. People pay to get wet. And you, if you watch the movie, you know the, the scene that I'm talking about. So Kevin Costner makes the trade. 
during the span of a day from the moment he makes the trade until draft day, he has not only attacked with doubt because what he does with Bo Callahan is he breaks down Bo Callahan's life and realizes that he is not what people think he is. It's not so much the skill. It's the person that he's concerned about. And that's what he says to the Jaguar um, GM later on when he makes a trade. He said it's more of a character issue. It's more of a character issue, kind of like Lawrence Phillips and Ryan Leaf. If you remember the Lawrence Phillips pick, you know, the, the Rams made a big deal for that, and it turned out that they messed up. They messed up for a guy that had no character. And Ryan Leaf was the same thing. They both had skills. You know, in that particular draft in 98 with Peyton Manning and Ron Leaf, people are saying, you know what, you can have one or the other and you'll be fine. The Colts could have picked Ryan Leaf that year, but instead they picked Peyton Manning and look at what happened. Ryan Leaf pretty much fizzled out within three to four years. See, it's about a character. It's not just the skills, but can you teach a player? Can you can a player become a leader? Can a player become a guy that um, players would want to fight for and fight alongside? If he's in a foxhole, can you trust him? Is he a general? Is he somebody that you would want to uh, rake, or put your career on? Is he going to lead you? And, and is he somebody that you want to follow? See, that's the thing about the NFL. You know, it's a game, yes. But when you look at people like Johnny Unitas and you look at people like Terry Bradshaw and you, and you look at people like Warren Moon and, and you go down the line later on in his career, Randall Cunningham definitely became this guy and, and Doug Williams and, and John Elway. These are men that their supporting cast wanted to follow and they want to follow. And that's the thing that Kevin Costner has an issue with. What type of player am I getting with Bo Callahan? What type of player am I getting with this person? So when you look at this year's draft in 2021, Trevor Lawrence is, is pretty much a given to be the first overall pick. But you have to ask yourself, yeah, he's got skills. Yeah, he's got all these things. Uh, but do you know if you want to follow this man? Do you want to follow this man? And, and it looks like the Jaguars really do. They gave Urban Meyer a shiny new contract, and they're going to give him a quarterback. Now, the problem is, I don't know if I want to play or see Trevor Lawrence twice a year. Uh, I don't know if I really do. The Titans are going to play him twice a year. I just don't think I want to see them. But Cleveland Cleveland has had such – when they came in, back into the league in 99, they drafted Tim Couch. And from that point on until Baker Mayfield, they have gone through so many quarterbacks. They have gone through so many coaches that – it's about time for them to start on the up and up. And last year seems like that they have truly started to ascend. But let me give you a little bit of background to Cleveland was not the first team that the production team of the, uh, the movie draft they wanted to pick. They wanted to actually pick the Buffalo Bills. But they realized, according again, back to Wikipedia, and I've read this in a couple other places, that Ohio was cheaper to produce. Now, it said crowd reactions of fans was at the actual 2013 draft, as well as the Cleveland Browns at local bars that where it was filmed. Cameos in real-life NFL figures such as Commissioner Roger Goodell and ESPN sportscaster Chris Berman was filmed before and after the draft took place. The rest of the film began filming in May 8, 2013. This movie did not get a lot of positive reviews, like I said. And in fact, uh, it was budgeted $25 million. It only made at the box office $29.5 million. So they will not be a draft day too. I mean, it was considered a bust. And I remember watching it in the theater in Dixon, the Roxy Theater in Dixon. And I think when I watched it, there were probably five people in there. Um, but I remember the day it came out, I was looking online. It was going to come out this day. So I went out and got it. Each year since then, other than this year, because I watched it a couple of days ago, I watch it the day of the draft. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it this year, watch it the day of the draft, but I tend to watch it the day of the draft. Four years ago, I was actually in an airport in Chicago 
four years ago, five years ago, actually, it's five years. Wow, time flies. Five years ago, I was actually in an airport in Chicago about to fly to Scotland. And I was watching the movie Draft Day on my tablet when Chicago hosted the draft. You know, I just thought that was pretty neat. This movie, again, would would this actually happen? Well, I don't know what goes through the GM's head. Most people, most GMs will not tell you that. I remember listening to stories from Floyd Reese, who was the GM for the uh, for the Titans for many years. And the year that they drafted um, Steve McNair in 94, uh, they got a call from uh, Tom Coughlin, who was the uh, coach for the Jaguars at the time. And they and he basically said, there's people that want to draft Steve McNair. We know what you want to. Would you trade for it? Would you trade the, for the would you trade picks with us? Basically move up to get Steve McNair. But Adams basically said, you get Steve McNair. Floyd Reese said, uh, we're not going to trade. So it's basically what, what I've heard from this. And this was uh, this was uh, an NFL special about the 94 draft. It said that they were sweating that Floyd Reese and Jeff Fisher were sweating. He said, you know what? I my first draft and I could have been fired if a team jumped us and picked up Steve McNair. And you hear stories about these, some great trades being done during the draft, like Michael Vick. Uh, you know, the Falcons went up to get him and they paid off, paid off for the most part. Remember, many of us remember the Phillip Rivers and the Eli Manning trade. Uh, now, I don't know what you think about it. To me, I think the Giants got the better deal because of the two Super Bowl rings, but wins and, um, you know, stats, Philip Rivers is a better player overall. John Elway, John Elway in 83 uh, did, said, I'm not going to play for the Colts, but yet guess what? The Colts drafted him and ended up trading him for Chris Hinton and the Broncos. Herschel Walker, many of you remember the Herschel Walker trade to the Bron- uh, from the Cowboys to the Vikings, and the Cowboys pretty much built their dynasty in the 90s through that trade. You know, there's a struggle. Many uh, many players, uh, you know, GMs right now are struggling with their picks. I think the first few picks are going to be quarterbacks, but then uh, when you get down into the teens and 20s, it's really not set in stone what is the best and what's what's good. Uh, there's a struggle for this, and you'll probably see a lot of teams either jump up big time to get the player they want or they will fall back into the second round because it's a lot safer in the second round, and you don't put a lot of money, number one, and number two, a lot of years into the first round pick that you're not sure of. And when you come down to it, do you want the Vontae Mack who had the character and, and the the love and, and, the, and the motor, or do you want Bo Callahan who may have the skill set, but it turns out may not have had the love and the dedication of his teammates? Which one do you want? To me, Vontae Mack, obviously. But I'm not going to go in and spoil it. But if you haven't seen um, Draft Day, I encourage you to go out there and watch it. It's great. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. Uh, I give it uh, out of five stars. I give it I give it a three and a half. It's a pretty good movie. But, you know, the thing that really gets me about this movie, it shows you the inner working of the GM quarterback relation with Tom Welling, his character, and Kevin Costner. Uh, when Tom Welling finds out that he that the Browns have traded up to get Bo Callahan, he basically goes and tells Kevin Costner to trade him, to trade him. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And it turns out, well, I'm not like I said, I'm not going to give it away. But I remember the stories about what happened after the, the Chargers drafted Phillip Rivers. They had Drew Brees, and I think they should have kept Drew Brees, but I know the people in, in New Orleans are happy that they didn't. Uh, but you think, well, a younger, healthier quarterback will be better. Well, you don't always know that. You don't always know that. And really with the draft, it's the unknown versus the known. Drew Brees had a hurt shoulder, yes. But he turned out to be an overall better quarterback, a better player than Phillip Rivers could be. He turned out to be that way. What would have happened if they kept Drew Brees? I don't know. The Chargers probably wouldn't have moved to Los Angeles, number one. And number two, maybe they would have had a Super Bowl or two. I'm not certain. And I guess we'll never know that. Uh, But you never know when it comes to the draft. 
you know, you can pick the number one overall and, and pick a dud, or you can get a stud like Terrell Davis and obviously uh, Tom Brady and, and people like that in the fifth, sixth, seventh rounds. It's neat to watch. I have ended up last year. I didn't get to do that because I don't have cable and I thought I could watch it over the NFL app and I can't do that. So I, I told my parents I'm coming to their house in big, the big town of Bonacqua, Tennessee, with some chicken wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. And I'm going to be sitting watching the first round draft pick in their living room. You know, they thought they got rid of me, but their their son's coming back to to eat at their house and to take their TV up for about three hours on Thursday. Now, I hope everyone has a good time to watch it, has a chance to sit down and watch it. Um uh, but, you know, you never know when it comes to the draft. <laughs> I, I like to think that I'm a pretty good GM, but every time I do things on Madden, uh, it turns out that I probably should have stayed where I was and, and not, not done anything and probably just picked up somebody. I really never get good, good marks. Madden doesn't think I know what I'm doing. You know, the Browns were told to make a splash, and obviously we don't know what happens. But I want to throw out one last thing that has always kind of puzzled me. Now it's different, but when this movie came out, you see three or four different players wanting to be Browns. They were wanting to be Browns. Today is different. Yes, they're an exciting team, but back in 2013 and 14, I don't know of too many people who actually wanted to play for the Cleveland Browns. That's always kind of made me think. <laughs> it's like, hmm. Uh, I don't know, but today, you know, yeah, I want to play for the Cleveland Browns. 2013 to 14, probably not. Again, I hope everybody has a great day. Uh, enjoy the NFL draft. Have fun with it. And, and keep in mind, uh, football isn't life, but it makes life better. Be positive. Be uplifting. Look for good things to do for people. And again, thank you for listening to the Footballers Family Podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including T-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to SportsHistoryNetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items. Plus, get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.